Welcome to Going to Blue today, everybody. Home of the college football fan. And don't forget about the checklist. Hat check, sunglasses check, Pepsi check, notes check, sources check, and thick skin is a check. And don't forget the same gear to represent your team and yourself in my background. Send it to P.O. Box 360, Liberty, South Carolina, 29657, and get yourself a shout out. On to the next video. And hey, you already know what time it is, so might as well sit down, brace yourself, and buckle up because you are entering the speculation zone. In case you're wondering, these are the teams that we don't have represented for the mini helmets. As you can see, we actually have quite a few big brands that's not represented here at Golden Blue Dude. So get your team represented here on Golden Blue Dude. Well, I'm hearing from a lot of people that the TV deal negotiations for the pack. 12 is over that part is done and over with the numbers are set in stone so it'll be interesting to find out over the next couple of days whether these teams sign this grant of rights whether this tv deal is a decent tv deal whether it's competitive with the big 12 or maybe even surpasses the big 12 i don't think it surpasses the big 12 the number that i'm hearing is between 22 25 million so that's not even going to be close to the big 12 and on top of that does that take into consideration the cost that it's going to take for streaming because remember this is going to be a streaming heavy tv deal so we could be talking around seven to eight million dollars per year for each school as far as factoring in the cost for production so they could be looking at anywhere as low as 18 to 20 million per team once you figure in the cost of production. Oh, and one more thing. We can't forget that the Pac-12 still owes Comcast $50 million. How does that get factored in into this TV deal? Just ask MLS. They have a streaming heavy package. In fact, they might be streaming only. And they have to shell out $16 million a year. And it looks like the Pac-12 would have to shell out $75 million a year. So the deal is done. From what I'm hearing, the TV deal part is done. Then they got to get the teams to sign a grant of rights to keep everybody together. So right now is the open time, the open spot for anybody that if they don't like the TV deal, they don't sign those grant of rights. And then they talk to other conferences and figure out if they can get a better TV deal elsewhere. And remember what I said yesterday. The Arizona president came out and said, nobody's going to make a move until we see this TV deal. Well, it seems like this TV deal is done, so everybody knows the numbers. And now the Arizona president is saying, yes, we are talking to the Big 12. So maybe it's been decided this TV deal is not good enough. We are going to talk to the Big 12, even though we already have been. And we're going to really think about joining the Big 12. And in fact, we will join the Big 12. It's just a process. This was a big time step that needed to happen as far as the TV deal actually done. They see the numbers and then do the team sign the grant of rights. It looks like Arizona has seen the numbers and they don't like the numbers and they're ready to get out of the Pac-12. Next question is, what about Colorado? Are they okay with the numbers or are they going to jump to the Big 12 as well? And I do think there will be a couple of teams to jump. I think the Pac-12 does survive this. I think the majority of the Pac-12 ends up signing these grant of rights. But I do think Colorado and Arizona will be headed off to the Big 12. We know that Arizona State has been adamant that they're not going anywhere. And we heard the Arizona president say that nobody's leaving the Pac-12 before they see the media deal. So Arizona said, nobody's leaving the Pac-12 until we actually see the media deal. But if that media deal isn't good enough, then you're going to start seeing teams jumping. So now's the time to keep your eyes out. There might be news where everybody signs the grant of rights. That's still a possibility. But then we might start hearing news where everybody is not signing the grant of rights. Maybe a large majority do. But then you'll hear the universities that don't sign the grant of rights. And those would be the universities that will be jumping either to the Big Ten or the Big 12. It'll be interesting to see if Oregon and Washington sign these grant of rights. And on top of that, how long will these grant of rights be? Because it's been rumored that Oregon and Washington will not sign a grant of rights longer than three years, which is crazy if you ask me. Why would you bend over backwards and kiss the rear end of Oregon and Washington if they're just going to leave in three years anyways? Because remember, Oregon and Washington, they also want unequal revenue share. So all that is unfolding right now because I'm hearing that the TV deal is done. So these next few days or weeks is going to be very, very important to see if anybody comes out and says that they're leaving for another conference or if all these teams sign the grant of rights. Now, I do think that Arizona and Arizona State will be split out somehow, some way. There is no legislation that ties these two universities together. It was rumored that a legislation existed that wherever Arizona was, Arizona State must be, and wherever Arizona State was, Arizona must be. That legislation does not exist. So one of these universities can go to one conference and the other university can either stay in the conference or go to another conference. So there's several situations that I see Arizona and Arizona State splitting up. The first scenario is Arizona stays with the Pac-12. They're going to sign those grant of rights. They're going to stick it out. Excuse me, Arizona State, not Arizona. With the majority of the Pac-12, I'm thinking at least eight members, six to eight members, something like that. So they sign the grant of rights. They stick around, but Arizona 
finally decides to make the jump to the Big 12, making better money. Imagine that, being able to say that you make more money than your arch rival, Arizona State, who's stuck in the Pac-12. I'm sure this rivalry could remain intact as far as an out-of-conference game, so I wouldn't worry about that. But Arizona makes the jump to the Big 12, makes more money than Arizona State. Who knows how long the grant of rights for the Pac-12 would be, so Arizona State would be in the Pac-12 or stuck in the Pac-12 for however long the grant of rights are, three years, five years, seven years, I don't know. But they're staying in the Pac-12. They're probably going to make around 22 to $25 million per team per year because, remember, if a couple teams jump, then the rest of these teams get a larger slice of the pie. Not a much larger slice, but nonetheless, a larger slice. So that's another thing to keep in your mind. Maybe some of these teams stay behind because they actually get a little bit bigger of a piece if some of these teams do, in fact, jump. So Arizona State stays in the Pac-12, and Arizona goes to the Big 12. But there's also another scenario. Maybe the Big 10, and I've heard these rumors as well, maybe the Big 10 could be interested in Arizona. Arizona does have AU status. Most people think that the Big 10 is interested in either Washington and Oregon, or maybe Washington and Utah, or maybe Cal and Stanford, or maybe Washington and Stanford. And there's an argument for all of those combinations. But there's also an argument that the Big Ten could be interested in Arizona. That would give them a footprint in a new state, the state of Arizona. Arizona does have AU status. Arizona does have really good academics and really good endowments and really good research. So they do check a lot of the boxes for the Big Ten. And on top of that, it would ease the travel issues for UCLA and USC more so than Washington, Utah, Oregon. The only teams that they wouldn't beat as far as helping travel for USC and UCLA would be Cal and Stanford. That's it. So it could be a combination of Arizona and Stanford, Arizona and Washington, Arizona and Utah. Remember, I've talked about how Fox and ESPN do not want Utah in the Big 12 because they already have a footprint in the state of Utah. Maybe they change their minds. I don't know. And they do want Utah in the future. But right now, it seems like they only want Colorado and Arizona in the Big 12. Well, what if the Big 10 turns around and goes, well, we actually want Arizona. We want Arizona and Washington or Arizona and Stanford because we think that that helps the travels with USC and UCLA just a little bit more. Arizona is a decent TV market. They have AU status. The academics are there. We want to take Arizona instead, and we'll take them with, say, a Stanford. Stanford has great academics, great research, elite in all those areas, because remember, the Big Ten is a Commonwealth Conference. It's a shared conference. In other words, if you join the Big Ten, then you're sharing your resources. So the more resources you have, the more valuable you are to the Big Ten. That's why Stanford and Cal do carry a high value to the Big Ten. Not football-wise, not athletics-wise, but academics, research, endowments, all that stuff, very, very valuable to the Big Ten. So what if the Big Ten turns its attention to Arizona and Washington or Stanford? Then they would end up in the Big Ten, Arizona State stuck in the Pac-12 still, or maybe the SEC takes a peek at Arizona State as well because, remember, they carry the Phoenix TV market. That's a decent-sized TV market. And if you give and invest into Arizona State, Arizona State could be a sleeping giant. I'm telling you that right now. Arizona State is in a very large TV market. I think they've been kind of subdued because of the Pac-12 situation. You put them in the SEC with SEC money, I'm telling you, Arizona State could really, really wake up and do some damage when it comes to athletics. Now, I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just saying it's one of these scenarios that I've been looking at. So what if a scenario where Arizona and Arizona State get split up, Arizona actually goes to the Big Ten, and Arizona State goes to the SEC? So scenario one, Arizona goes to the Big 12, Arizona State stays in the Pac-12. Scenario two, Arizona goes to the Big Ten, and Arizona State gets stuck in the Pac-12. Scenario three, Arizona to the Big Ten, Arizona State to the SEC. Then finally, the fourth scenario, which is probably the most unlikely scenario, but still doable, Arizona to the Big Ten, and Arizona State to the Big 12. A complete flip-flop of what we've been hearing. So I think that's the least likely, but it's still possible. I do think that one of these scenarios does happen. I think Arizona and Arizona State do end up getting split up in the future. I think the most likely case scenario is Arizona to the Big 12 and Arizona State's with the Pac-12 and they sign the grant of rights, whether it's three years, five years, seven years, but they stay in the Pac-12. But any of these scenarios are possible. I think Arizona and Arizona State will eventually be split up. Do y'all know in the comment section, number one, do you agree with me? 
you think Arizona and Arizona State will eventually be split up? Number two, which scenario do you think is the most likely as far as this split up goes? Arizona to the Big 12, Arizona State stays in the Pac-12. Arizona to the Big 10, Arizona State stays in the Pac-12. Arizona to the Big 10, Arizona State to the SEC. Or Arizona to the Big 10 and Arizona State to the Big 12. Which one of those is the most likely case scenario if you do think that Arizona and Arizona State will indeed get split up? That's all I got for you this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on my next show.